Hey guys, today we're going to um, we're, we're going to be working with RabbitMQ, and we're going to show you how to enable the management plugin, which includes a GUI. So the management plugin provides like a, a web API, and um, it actually provides the uh, also provides the RabbitMQ admin command and um, some other things. But um, one of the big things, at least for me, um, especially, especially if you're new to it, one of the biggest things you're probably wondering is, hey, can I get a GUI for RabbitMQ? And yeah, you, you definitely can. And it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty decent GUI. It's a web GUI. Um, so that comes along with the management plugin. So um, we're gonna show you how to do that. It's pretty easy. Um, you basically run this command. Um, let's see here, move this down here. So um we've got uh, actually I'm, I'm gonna start rabbit mq back up um let's see here so there we go our rabbit mq server is running so assuming your rabbit mq server is up and running and i, I believe it, i i actually haven't tested it with the server down um uh you, you you might if you have a use case for installing this while the server is not running you could give it a try um but in, in any case I've i've always done this while it's up and running and you can do it while it's up and running um so it can be up and running you can enable this plugin and it'll just start working right away you don't have to do anything else so um like you don't have to bounce the server or anything um so basically you just say rabbit mq plugins enable rabbit rabbit mq management so that's that's as basically installing a plugin is as easy as saying um is it Basically, this is it. Unless it's like a third-party plugin or something that's not included with RabbitMQ. But in this case, we're kind of lucky. This is one of the plugins that's actually included with the RabbitMQ distribution. So, um, all, yeah, all you have to do is uh, run this command here. We're going to run this right now. This is assuming the binary is on your path. Like you see up here, we ran RabbitMQ server detached. The, this this uh, command is on my path already. I already have my path set up. And I covered that in a previous video where we showed you how to install RabbitMQ. But um, yeah, so basically copy this command here, uh, paste it over in this window, and let's run that. And it should run pretty quick. And there we go. It, it took maybe a couple seconds or so, and it is now installed. So um, the, and the nice thing is, so, so basically, you can take, and now it's running on the local host. Now, if you're running this on a remote server, you'd have to have the actual IP of that server, make sure that it's not firewalled off or there are network issues or anything like that. But in this case, um, I'm not running a firewall on my machine. And uh, this, this terminal right here, this is on the same machine that I'm logged into right now. Like this is running on my Linux desktop right here. So um, the same machine that this terminal is running, a, I'm running this server in this terminal. I'm also, it's the same physical box that I'm running this browser on. So I'm basically just, the IP I'm gonna reach out to is uh, just the local host, 127001 at port 15672. Now, if, if you, you're running this on a different IP address, substitute in your IP address, but um, the port is gonna remain the same. It's still 15672. So basically copy this URL here, um, open up another thing here, and let's see here, paste in this here. And there we go, there's the login for it. So the default password is guest. I'm gonna wanna filter that out, uh, G-U-E-S-T for the password. So username is guest, password is guest. That's the default. Um, I'm actually gonna show you how to change that in a future video also. So um, stay tuned for that, or just you know check check through all my videos and see if I've posted that video. Yeah, I should be posting it pretty soon if I haven't already at the time of you watching this video. Um, let's see. So hit login, and there you are. Um, it's telling me to change my login because it thinks there's a data breach on my local host. Anyways, that's that's kind of meaningless, but um, so. Um, yeah, here's the overview. So you, you can see it gives you a rev relatively nice GUI. Um, gives you an overview of like what you have of your nodes and some other nice stuff. Um, you can go to connections and see. So I don't have any actual queues and I don't have any consumers connecting from my queues. But um, if I did, um, and you'll, you'll see this when we show you how to do um, some of the 
different how to articles on like how to like um, close channels, close, you know, purging cues and stuff like that. I have a lot of how to videos coming up where we're going to show you how to actually use that stuff. Um, but this is a fresh install now, so I don't have any consumers connected to this. I just started it up. I haven't run any um, client scripts yet. Um, we are going to show you that in some of our future videos. And I'm going to uh, also, <clears throat> um, I actually, I'm not sure. I, m I might include it when I go over like the code um, tutorials also, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but anyways, you would normally see a bunch of connections here and you can click on the connection and it'll show you what, um, what channels are associated with that connection. Um, there's a subtle difference between connections and channels, but um, yeah, that, that's, um, that, that's another can of worms for another day, I guess. Um, you can actually go to a channels tab here and it'll show you like the channels you have open, but it doesn't let you do all the operations on an individual channel level. Like you can't just close one channel. If you wanted to close a channel, you'd actually just have to close the connection. So, um, and it'll show you like exchanges you have. I believe these are all like default exchanges, but if you create a new exchange, it's going to show up here and you can actually, so normally when you create an exchange, you're going to be doing it through code. Um, so you and we'll, we'll cover that when we cover the code in our future videos. But if for whatever reason you want to do it manually through the GUI, you can add an exchange here and you can also do this from the command line. We're not really covering that. We're just, you know, covering what's in this GUI right now. This is one of the main things that you're going to, this is not the only thing. There's one other command. There's this rabbitmq admin command. I'm going to show you in a bit that comes along with this plugin also. But one of the main things is the GUI. This is probably what most pe people, particularly beginners, are probably looking for. So, um, yeah, anyways, you could create a new exchange if you wanted to, I guess, for testing or there, there are probably use cases for it. They're, they're, they put it there for a reason. Um, Let's see, cues. This will show you what cues you have. And um, let's see here. Um, you can create a new queue if you want. Usually you're going to do that from code also. Now, another, this is a really useful um, thing here, um, is the admin tab. I mean, not that the others aren't useful. Like you can use, like I would, I would use the connections. Like it's useful to see the connections and like pending messages, things like that, and channels. But, um, this is actually really useful for closing connections and, and like purging queues and that, that, type, that type of stuff. I guess you'd purge the queue from the queues tab. But that, that's what it, like you wouldn't, cr I wouldn't normally add a queue through this, but I would use it to purge or delete a queue and that type of stuff. Or like say if you accidentally created like 100 queues or something, actually you'd probably want to use a, do that from the command line with a for loop or something. But I anyways, yeah, so there, there's a lot you could do with those tabs, but the admin command is actually pretty useful so you can see we have um, one user called guest and it has uh, a tag for administrator and it can access uh, this virtual host by default um, you can click on guest you can see different um, attributes of this user um, you can change the password for the user and so on um, and you could do that stuff from the command line and stuff too um, I haven't actually looked at changing the password from the I think I did look into changing the password from the command line. Anyways, um, so that's, that's just you under ad, the admin tab. You have users, you have virtual hosts, uh, features, flags, policies. You can do a lot of stuff with policies, um, limits, uh, clusters, things like that. So anyways, that, that is the, uh, that's um, the, the GUI. So another thing you might want to use this for is uh, is installing the rabbitmq admin command, which lets you do a few different things and use different syntax, and the output comes out a little bit different. Certain things you do, um, it's a little bit more convenient. Um, so you can install this by going to, uh, you, you go to your GUI. This is the same URL that we saw up above here. This is the same exact uh, place you went to before, same port and everything, except instead of just going to that, you basically go to this directory, CLI, and rabbitmq admin and that's the command right there so um you go to this in your browser and it'll just download the the tool um and then you can copy it to wherever you want to run it from whatever server you're running it on or if you're on the command line already you can just use the wget command and pull it down for you so in this case i'm going to go to uh i'm just going to pull it down to my home directory and uh 
But if you want this, you're, you're probably going to want to add this to your path. Um, I haven't actually added that into this stock yet. But yeah, you would want to add this to your path. Um, so you can just run it without having to specify the path. So similar to what we did when we installed RabbitMQ and we added the regular, um, we added the RabbitMQ path. Um, actually, you know what? You wouldn't have to add this to your path if you just copy this into your RabbitMQ sbin directory. So that's probably a better idea. Um, I'm going to show you right now. You can just paste this command in here. Um, say wget and now you have the RabbitMQ admin command. So well, let's see here. So that's it right there. And um, if we want to run it from anywhere, I'm, I'm actually going to show you how you can actually, you we don't really have to add this to the path. We already have the path set up for um, when we installed this, we set up the path. So I'm going to show you how you copy it into your uh, SBIN directory and it'll just run for you. So, so you can see your your SBIN directory has um, like it has this RabbitMQ plugins command um, that I believe we used at yeah that's that's the same command we used up here RabbitMQ plugins and it has your RabbitMQ CTL command that you use to like check the status and shut down the server and stuff and it does a ton of other stuff like there's tons of options for it it's a great command um, anyways so. Um, we're going to put this rabbitmq admin command in this same directory. We've already added this directory um, in a previous video when we did the installation. We added that to the path that's in it's in our bash rc. So that's already on the path. We just co copy this command to that directory and we've got it. So um, copy this and uh, copy it to this directory. And it, and it makes sense to put it there because all the other you know commands are there too. So there we go, we've got it in there. Now wherever we are, we can just run the rabbitmq admin command like this. And uh, permission denied, let's see here. And so I don't recall this coming up before, but this is an easy fix. So um, looks like it doesn't have um, execute permission. So we'll just uh, chmod that and fix it. So we'll just add, uh, you'll see um, you have read, write, um, read, write, and read permission on this. So uh, the user has read, write, uh, the group has read, write, and everyone else just has read permission. We're gonna add execute permission for the user. So there we go. We added um, execute permission only for the uh, owner of the uh, the owner of the this file, which is user one, which is the user I'm logged in as. So if you want to run this command, you can now just say rabbitmq admin from wherever you happen to be, and it runs it. Now it gives me an error, so it is still running, but the error is just saying, "Hey, you didn't specify any parameters. You have to tell it what we actually want to use it for." Um, I mean, next you could just say help. Um, we, we do use, and it gives you the usage, like all the different things you could do with it. So that that's great. Um, and we are going to end up using this command a lot in uh, future videos. Um, so there you have it. That's uh, that's how to install the RabbitMQ admin command, and um, how to install the RabbitMQ, uh, or how to enable the management plugin, and uh, how to use the the management GUI, the management web GUI. So hopefully you found this useful. If, um, if you want to see more content like this uh, or want to see our future videos, you're, you're going to want to probably subscribe. If you found this useful, give us a thumbs up. If not, you can even give us a thumbs down, your call. Um, definitely leave a comment down below if you have, you know, we, we want to know what you think, any comments, uh, criticisms, questions. Um, we try to get back to everybody. Um, so yes, yeah, so we want to hear what you think. Um, definitely leave a comment down below. 
you're, you're probably going to want to subscribe and you're, you're actually going to want to click the little bell icon because um, you get an update when we come out with new videos. So in any of the, the other questions about RabbitMQ that we answer, we're, we're going to probably cover some more RabbitMQ stuff. We cover a lot of other technology related stuff too. So there's a lot of great stuff coming out. Um, but a good percentage of it is going to be RabbitMQ stuff too and other related stuff. We're doing like uh, databases, web servers, all kinds of great stuff. Um, we're going to be going through a lot of the code examples, or at least that's, that's, that's the plan anyways. I'm going to go through all the code examples for RabbitMQ. Um, I'm going to cover a lot of the commands, how to do a lot of things. But there, there's a lot, of, a lot of good stuff coming up, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it useful. And um, as always, we'll see you guys next time.